वेलकम टू माई कोर्स इलेक्ट्रोकेमिकल एनर्जी स्टोरेज दिस इज मॉड्यूल नंबर टू वेर आई एम डिस्क्राइबिंग डिफिनेशंस एंड मेजर मेजरिंग मेथड्स एंड दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर टेन वेर मेजरमेंट ऑफ रिसर्जेबल सेल एज ए केस स्टडी दैट आई विल इंट्रोड्यूस Uh, you know that uh, so far in all these previous lectures we are talking about various principles the thermodynamic principles the characteristics of the batteries uh, then the um, then the measurement uh, uh, protocol that usually we use uh, uh, and uh, several other things now it is important to show you that uh, if you construct a lithium ion um, cell in the laboratory then what are the characteristics that actually you will be getting and how much it is relevant whatever you have learned through my earlier lectures the experimental results how uh, much they are relevant to the knowledge that you have gained and i will do it time to time in order to make uh, this uh, lecture more meaningful so uh, you know that uh, uh, any battery it is having a positive electrode uh, which i should not define as cathode but it is positive electrode here i have selected uh, one material uh, which is spinel type all of you you know uh, one speciality of this particular material that uh, it is uh, having uh, a, a high voltage uh, positive electrode so 5 volt positive electrode Uh, this is the uh, positive electrode we will talk about anode uh, so far we have talked about graphite uh, but this is also a spinel uh, electrode uh, which is um, lithium titanium oxide we abbreviate as lto so that we will um, introduce then uh, in order to measure the electrochemical properties we need to construct the cell in uh, coin cell configuration and uh, there are various types of coin cell so the fabrication facilities that uh, we are having in my laboratory this is uh, we can make cr2032 type cell where uh, this 20 is the diameter uh, of the cell 20 mm and uh, 3.2 uh, mm is the thickness so that uh, turns this name Uh, then we will talk about the electrochemical characteristics in half cell configuration then um, imp impedance spectroscopy measurement we introduced uh, we taught about it then uh, i will show that how this imp impedance spectroscopy characteristics are actually reflected in this uh, uh, type of half cell and also the full cell characteristics we will define so this uh, um, lithium manganese nickel oxide this is uh, from the parent uh, one can synthesize from the parent uh, lithium manganese oxide limn2o4 which is uh, a spinel kind of uh, ceramic and uh, dope part of manganese with uh, nickel uh, with uh, plus um, 1.5 instead of 2 so 0.5 Uh, atomic fraction i have uh, introduced uh, replacing part of manganese and as i said this is high voltage cathode material so it will have uh, uh, when it crystallizes it can uh, crystallize either in a disordered uh, face centered cubic structure so this is the disordered structure where lithium is located in a tetrahedral 8a site and um, uh, manganese and nickel ions they are randomly uh, distributed in the octahedral sites you know that uh, this is uh, the tetrahedral site and this two are there in the octahedral site and this 8a and 16d they are wyckoff notation so this is notation of this octahedral name of the octahedral and tetrahedral sites and oxygen is in a cubic close pack um, uh, arrangement which is uh, having 32e positions so this is the disordered uh, spinel structure which we are familiar with um, i have already introduced uh, the spinel structure in my crystal structure in module 1 lectures 
then um, sometimes this is ordered ordered simple cubic structure of the same material the manganese ions are distributed into another site which is 12 d sites uh, and nickel ions in 4 b site so the actual sites you can see it uh, corresponding to these figures and oxygen ion is also different um, the wyckoff notation is 24 e instead of 32 e and uh, 8 c sites so and lithium are also uh, located uh, in 8 c sites um, so this um, causes a ordering of nickel and manganese ions in the structure and hence uh, this is referred to an ordered structure so oxygen here is in the 24 e site only and 8 c site actually uh, this is uh, devoted to lithium lithium uh, are located in 8 c sites uh, the second uh, uh, material which is anode that is also having a cubic spinel structure and uh, it has a 8 a site um, tetrahedral coordination uh, where lithium is occupied and then 16 d site where uh, titanium as well as part of lithium also is there they are occupied there and 32 sites is cubic close pack oxygen and uh, this uh, lithium path pathway which is a three dimensional kind of thing so this is shown in the free space here uh, marked as cross so here through here lithium can diffuse so the formula looks a bit weird li4 ti5 o12 but uh, one can always write it in ab2 o4 structure so here you can see that this two constitutes uh, two uh, and uh, lithium is one and so that is a b2 o4 structure and uh, here you can see this lithium and titanium uh, they are in the ratio of 1 is to 5 uh, in a uh, cubic close pack arrangement uh, uh, which assumes the octahedral sites so that is the structural definition now what you will have to do you will have to synthesize this material so to synthesize this material you will have to do a batch calculation if you need uh, say um, about 10 grams of batch then what are the uh, things what are the precursor material that you will take uh, so that finally this uh, lithium manganese nickel oxide uh, in calcine form you get those uh, spinel structure so usually that is done uh, by this process and we call it a batch calculation so you need to know the molecular weight of uh, lnmo so all these atomic weights are needed so you can have the molecular weight and uh, the amount that you need uh, you divide by molecular weight so you need this uh, you you will get that how much moles you need so the precursor weight uh, this is uh, according to the mole fraction so if i ta talk about this then this is the mole fraction uh, if i take 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 um, lithium is required then 1.5 into 0 0.05 manganese is required and so on and so forth and oxygen will be adjusted accordingly so uh, exactly that has been done lithium 1 uh, this is its molecular weight and you need to need you need to know the yield of the chemical that you are using so it is 99 percent pure high pure uh, lithium acetate we had taken so the amount of lithium uh, acetate that is this much similarly we calculated the manganese and uh, we calculated the nickel so i i have all this uh, amounts right now uh, there are various process that you can adopt for this particular process we went for a auto combustion synthesis now auto combustion synthesis is something like you have a oxidizing and reducing agent and uh, upon reaction it catches fire and uh, at room temperature so there are a lot of nucleation densities are there in the solution and there is minimal grain growth so this is not the scope uh, to teach you about the uh, nucleation and growth theory in one of my earlier courses on non-metallic material 
I had a detailed uh, description on auto combustion synthesis. So, if you have access of that course, you can uh, uh, you can know more about it. So, here what we do there is a um, chelating agent we call citric acid. Uh, citric acid and this total metal usually we keep 1 is to 1. So, accordingly uh, you know the molar fraction of this metal and accordingly you select how much citric acid you need. We also use uh, ethylene glycol and uh, a strong oxidizing agent that is nitric acid. So, this specific uh, composition of citric acid and ethylene glycol that is based on our experimental uh, criteria and also we have a tentative calculation um, that guide us that uh, what are this uh, um, precursor we will take uh, to make a phase pure material and what are the signs behind it. So, that is why you need to uh, uh, go through this uh, auto combustion synthesis lecture if you have access to my earlier courses. Uh, so, um, uh, ethylene glycol and nitric acid as a oxidizer that is also uh, added into the solution and this is the process that you take this uh, salt then citric acid solution you put nitric acid and ethylene glycol stoichiometrically then there is a clear solution then keep on heating you will form a viscous gel and then it will start to auto combust this viscous gel and as I said the nucleation density is very high and grain growth is limited. So, you get the powders. Now, the powder is not completely phase pure. So, you need to calcine it uh, typically at 450 degree Celsius for 3 hours in air. Then you will have to calcine it further and this first calcination is to get rid of all these organic components and the second calcination is for the improvement of crystal structure. Although the ash combusted powder is also crystalline, but it may not be <coughs> free from organic. Uh, moieties and then uh, we do the characterize characterization of this calcine powder. Similarly, uh, we can do the batch calculation for lithium titanate formation in the same way. So, I will not repeat this you can go through this and you can have uh, uh, that uh, this much uh, grams of batch uh, how much precursor you will have to take. Only one difference is there earlier one all salts precursor we had taken, but here it is uh, a alkoxide precursor we have taken. So, in that way this is a uh, solgel kind of synthesis and the earlier one is a um, wet chemical synthesis and um, of course, uh, this does not undergo the auto combustion like the other one. So, it is a pure solgel synthesis. So, this is um, the way we uh, uh, prepared the titanium butoxide and lithium hydroxide was the salt and we did use uh, some kind of surfactant um, for the process need. And then finally, this uh, solution uh, we uh, did uh, a microwave heating. So, it has certain implication to control the phase purity as well as the morphology of the powder and calcined at 750 degree Celsius for 6 hours. So, in that way it is sol gel and microwave assisted hydrothermal synthesis. So, the process sometimes it looks like quite complicated sometimes it is not as simple as solid state synthesis where you mix different constituent and then shake it and bake it and get the material. Uh, we uh, work a um, lot of chemistry aspects to exactly uh, pinpoint the synthesis that will be beneficial for making this kind of complicated electrode materials. So, first you will have to see the structure and uh, usually we do Ridwilt refinement uh, to know exactly what is the precise lattice parameter, whether there is any impurity phase what is the theoretical density, what are the positions of the atom. I already talked about it that there are certain position these atom sits in spinel structure, uh, ordered spinel structure or uh, disordered spinel structure. So, Ridwell refinement will exactly tell you that uh, whether uh, uh, this kind of uh, 
uh, atom they uh, have assumed this position. Now, uh, actually what it does, um, uh, you construct uh, your crystal lattice, you know the lattice, you know the uh, space group now by knowing the points group and then um, uh, following the X-ray diffraction uh, theory, you can basically uh, calculate uh, what it would be the exact uh, X-ray diffraction pattern and match that X-ray diffraction pattern with your experimentally observed X-ray diffraction pattern. Now, if you, uh, if you uh, subtract the uh, X-ray diffraction experimentally obtained and X-ray diffraction obtained by um, this kind of uh, uh, simulation, then uh, if it exactly matches, then uh, this will certainly be a straight line, which is the case here. So, lot of good things you can do uh, from a Ridgeville refinement and we do it quite regularly. Then the surface morphology, how the powder looks like, both the surface part as well as its bulk, bulk part by uh, scanning electron and transmission electron microscopy. Similarly, for lithium titanate exactly the same things uh, we could do and uh, this is the surface morphology and each particle you can see there are different faceted structures, not necessarily everything will be circular. Uh, but um, from this scale, you can uh, measure the particle size and this is uh, a agglomerated kind of thing um, and then um, this uh, particle size distribution also uh, can be measured uh, if required. And uh, the major importance uh, is that, that this is having a faceted kind of structure that purposefully we did by adding the surfactant so that the growth of a particular plane is inhibited where the lithium ion diffusion is uh, marginalized. So, we only allowed the growth of the planes where lithium ion can diffuse very fast for our own uh, purpose. Uh, now, uh, you will have to make an ink uh, using this um, uh, process. So, actually the active electrode material 80 percent. Uh, mixed with the binder and uh, uh, conducting agent. In one of my lectures, you, you, you have seen it that it is not simply active material because they are ionically conducting, but electronically insulating. So, you will have to uh, mix it with a uh, uh, this conducting acetylene black, which is about 10 percent and you will have to bind it with the current collector. So, PVDF binder was used. So, PVDF dissolves in uh, N-methyl pyrolidin solvent. Then we do tape casting on aluminum foil because this is the positive electrode. Then we dry it and then roll press it to improve the tap density further. And then cut the electrode in the circular fashion. And uh, these are the components of the coin cell. So, you have the cathode, then electrolyte, you dip it in the liquid electrolyte LIPF6 in ECDMC. We will talk separately about separator material, uh, electrolyte material, why ECDMC or ECDEC we are using uh, later. Uh, then uh, you will have to put anode. Uh, so, in half cell the anode is lithium foil itself. Then a certain uh, spacer and spring is required and then finally, uh, you have a gasket with a top can. Uh, and you crimp everything together to get this kind of uh, um, coin cell. So, as you can see the diameter is 20 and this is 3.2 millimeters. So, that is why the name came 2032 CR0 coin cell. Then uh, suddenly you will have to do the cyclic voltammetry where the oxidation and reduction peaks are clearly visible. So, oxidation peak what will happen? that uh, if the manganese is not in plus 3 valence state, uh, only in plus 4 valence state, then once lithium you are taking out during charging, which is anodic process, uh, oxidation process, then there will be no valence state change. So, the fact that uh, manganese 3 plus is there, uh, so that means little bit uh, this is a disordered structure. And uh, nickel uh, will also get uh, oxidized. So, this is the from nickel 2 to nickel 4, it will get oxidized. 
and similar things you will get uh, during reduction when lithium is going back. So, the process is reversible that you can easily see here. Then uh, you do the charge discharge uh, measurement and the genesis of this voltage profile, what, why this the plateau is there. Uh, this is uh, by this time you know that we talked about the composition um, versus lithium content curve and then the tangent we put the chemical potential, we know the chemical potential is related to open circuit voltage. So, eventually uh, from free energy diagram you can constitute this kind of curve. In a separate lecture I will talk about it, the genesis of this types of curve and then you differentiate this curve and you will get something similar to this. So, if you differentiate this curve exact peak position you will be getting. So, nickel as you can see it goes from 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 uh, that will be very clearly identifiable and this kind of thing we call uh, a differential capacity plot. Then cyclability we do, uh, so repeatedly you cycle at a different current rate to see that how the discharge capacity falls. It is not a very great electrode because you can see within 80 cycles there is a uh, tremendous fall. So, this is some of our initial work by a PhD student. So, uh, we improved it quite further. And uh, Coulombic efficiency that define the difference between the charge capacity and the discharge capacity over uh, uh, um, cycles. So, that uh, should be very near to 100. Uh, so, that is uh, important. So, Coulombic efficiency has been plotted in the right part of the ordinate. And then we do this charge discharge at different rate. Uh, you know that at lower rate when you drain uh, C by 10 current, uh, then the capacity is quite high. But as you progressively go to higher current about 5 C, the capacity drops down because of uh, the um, several reasons which uh, while the course goes I will talk about it. So, this is cyclic voltammetry, this is charge discharge measurement along with that you do the uh, differential capacity measurement, then cycliability, Coulombic efficiency and uh, this are the rate performance. These are the things that you must do in a half cell configuration to see that whether the electrode whatever you have prepared that is of good quality. Then uh, the diffusion coefficient uh, you can easily measure by the impedance spectroscopy uh, measurement which I talked about and you can see that this is the Randall circuit that uh, uh, we, uh, we talked about. Uh, initially this uh, charge transfer resistance uh, you can see it is very low. So, charge transfer resistance was 97 uh, from this Randall circuit, it quite good fit. So, that means this kind of circuit is operative here. And uh, this uh, after cycling, uh, after cycling you can see that this has progressively increased. So, the charge transfer resistance is somehow increased, so that your capacity falls with the number of cycles. That is why the cyclability was not that good for this electrode which I mentioned uh, in the other thing. So, this is um, a representative uh, representative curve which occurs for many material. Unfortunately, for uh, LMNO uh, this is not the data, this is another material, uh, but that does not matter. Uh, but this the fall of the cyclability it is some way related to the charge transfer resistance increment with the uh, number of cycles. From the tail here you can also measure the diffusion coefficient by uh, using this uh, equation and uh, all the terminologies are defined uh, which is the gas constant and temperature, uh, then uh, concentration of uh, this material is for sodium ion battery. So, sodium ion concentration that you can calculate if you know the unit cell and how many sodiums are there per unit volume, you can calculate the concentration. Then surface area of the electrode is important, how much electron is transferred because out of this 3 sodium only 2 you can extract uh, in and out. So, this is 2 and F is the Faraday constant and uh, 
the sigma is uh, determined from the slope of this real part of z which you get from the impedance spectroscopy analysis versus uh, omega 2 pi uh, sorry omega that is 2 pi f um, 1 by omega to the power minus half. So, from there you can get this slope. So, you can easily calculate the diffusion coefficient. So, as you can see that for this particular sample diffusion coefficient uh, is not uh, really um, that much uh, affected, but uh, cyclability uh, still remains poor. So, that is one uh, usefulness of doing the impedance spectroscopy analysis. Similarly, we did uh, exactly the same thing for LTO. So, as you can see only titanium is there uh, which undergoes this redox reactions and uh, this is the flat part. Uh, so, the voltage profile is very different uh, if you see the earlier uh, curves um, uh, for lithium manganese I will go back. Uh, the earlier thing uh, it is very different sorry earlier thing is very different here you see it is flat, but suddenly it drops down, but in case of LTO it is uh, totally flat and then drops down. So, these are all related to the type of the material uh, whether it is a solid solution type or whether it is a two phase type that is contributing to this. So, cyclability for this material is uh, quite good as you can see up to 50 cycles uh, almost there is marginal fall in capacity. So, anode is behaving in one way, cathode is behaving in other way, coulombic efficiency is also very close to 100 and your rate performance is also quite good. So, as you can see different uh, current rate uh, we applied to this electrode and uh, there is um, fall only at very high uh, drainage current. Uh, so, this is a quite good anode as compared to the cathode that the student uh, prepared. Now, you will have to construct a full cell and this two uh, half cell they have different capacity. So, you will have to make the capacity balance. So, capacity balance also I will introduce uh, as a part of my uh, uh, other lectures. So, usually the thumb rule is that if your anode capacity is more with respect to your cathode capacity which is the case in this, then you will have to take less number sorry less amount of anode um, and do the charge balance. So, the charge in both the anode and cathode they should be similar. In other words, you know the source of lithium is always the cathode. So, lithium is coming from the cathode and you have a large quantity of anode material, then most part of the anode will remain unaffected because you do not have sufficient lithium to it. So, this uh, is actually done uh, from the half cell characteristics getting the uh, voltage profile and then match these two voltage profile. So, this is a simple calculation you can follow, uh, then it exactly tell you that uh, if you have the your cathode which is at higher potential the charge and discharge profile something like this. And in case of anode as I have shown that this charge and discharge profile, so initially it will get discharged. So, when it is charged then this one is discharged when it is discharged then this one is getting charged. Then if you construct it uh, with proper mass balance then certainly uh, this capacity will be something similar to this, this one, this one. So, this is a proper mass balance one and the voltage you can estimate from the simple uh, uh, difference which I told you in the, in the very fast slide that it depends on the chemical potential. Chemical potential is related to partial molar free energy and partial molar free energy uh, versus composition is related to voltage. So, it is basically the difference in chemical potential. So, you get uh, uh, after this calculation uh, you can exactly know that what will be your voltage of the full cell. 
when you construct the full cell it is no more lithium but uh, LTO as anode and your LMNO as cathode. So, exactly that has been done and this is the actual full cell value and uh, here you can see that uh, whatever was predicted around 3 volt this has been men mentioned only difference is that you know that your LMNO was not that good because it has cyclability problem although L2 LTO was good material. So, after this 1 to 10 cycles there is a reasonable drop in the capacity and you can calculate uh, the value uh, of the capacity of anode and cathode because these are basically capacitor like. So, they are connected in series. So, if you know the capacity of anode and cathode then you can estimate that indeed you should get at least at first cycle this much of capacity. You can do the differential capacity plot to identify the types of reaction that is going on and this is the typical data for the coulombic efficiency the blue part and the, uh, the rate performance for this full cell. So, uh, the reference for this particular work is uh, um, uh, published although it, it is in a better form it is published uh, by this uh, uh, student of mine. So, that will give you a good idea um, although the material is a bit different instead of LTO we used uh, MCMB uh, microcarbon mesobit uh, that kind of uh, carbonaceous material and this high voltage. Uh, cathode material uh, in a pouch cell configuration. So, the paper also talks about how to make the pouch cell not the coin cell for practical purpose. So, this needs to be um, read to understand whatever I talked about and for general electrochemistry this is uh, the Bible A. J. Bard's book and this is also a wonderful book that uh, I have uh, um, came across. So, a case study has been shown for LTO LMNO full cell, structure of the electrode, batch calculation, powder preparation, electrode fabrication has been described, coin cell fabrication and half cell electrochemical properties are described, cyclic voltammetry, charge discharge, fatigue and rate performance, they are important characteristics um, that uh, one need to uh, do in order to qualify the synthesized material for any practical application. And electrochemical impedance spectroscopy uh, uh, is uh, applied to estimate the diffusion coefficient and charge transfer resistance uh, what is going on inside the battery and concept of mass balance and full cell fabrication that I have introduced and full cell characteristics have been demonstrated. We will keep on doing lot of uh, case study. So, whatever you are learning you will see that experimental and theoretical there are very very close correlation. Thank you for your attention.